Hello students, visual thinkers, and fellow awesome people. This is Muddy Waters, head chief at Backyard Creeks, co-creator at the Watershed Graphics Company, and co-instructor at the Doodle Institute. Woo woo! Just got home from a very long, super awesome day, and thought I would do a quick, uh, not perfect video to let you know about my day and share a couple of the highlights from the workshop. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you to the Doodle Girl and Friends for all the support. I could really feel the love, and it meant a lot to me uh, going into it, so thank you. Today I did my very first workshop on doodling. It was called Applied Visual Practice. How to use graphic recording, graphic facilitation, and sketch noting to improve group process and personal productivity. But when it came time for the title slide, I scratched all that out and wrote, How to be very awesome today with money. <laughs> so it was great. We had uh, 40 people in attendance, um, and they are either alumni or current participants in the Natural Resources Leadership Institute, a program here at a North Carolina State University um, that teaches collaboration, facilitation, and environmental conflict resolution. It's really where I learned, um, improved my facilitation skills. It's, it's meant a lot to me. I was a fellow from 10 years ago, um, and they were celebrating their 20th anniversary. Um, they had a, a cool reception, on Wednesday night and then today they had two workshops. They had this uh, graphic workshop in the morning and then something in the afternoon. I don't remember. <laughs> I couldn't stay for it because I was off to my next event. Um, but it was really great. And so the first thing I want to share with you, uh, the first highlight from the day, um, so I thought as I think about my feedback for myself, I'm going to create three categories. Keep it, ditch it, and tweak it. So I thought I would share three um, keep it moments from today, things that I would want to do again in my next workshop. So the first was how I did the introductions. Uh, before we even got started with the day, before I even gave my introduction or kind of set the stage for the day, um, the only thing that had happened so far is they'd come into the room and they got some awesome supplies, right? So they got um, a book on visual meetings, David Simmons' book um, from the Grove Institute. They got a sketchbook. They got a printout of Diane Black's free mini sketchbook basics book. Um, they got a couple of other handouts. They got Muddy's awesome resource guide that I put together with some of my favorite resources for training, um, for books, and a couple other tidbits. Uh, and then they got a couple of coloring pages um, and a uh, cardstock, piece of cardstock to make a name tent. That was the first thing they did is uh, use a name tent. Oh, and then they got some writing instruments. They got uh, a pack of Mr. Sketch fruity scented markers, so I think it was a 12 pack, maybe, maybe an 8 pack, a nice colorful pack of, of chisel tip markers, then they got a sharpie, and then they got um, one of these Energel pens, which if you're into sketch noting, um, this was a hot tip from Doug Neal with Verbal to Visual, um, dot com in the Verbal to Visual classroom. These Energel pens are super awesome and in fact I think he said he heard it from Mike Rohde so and he's like the best out there so you know it's got to be true. So I got a pen, sharpie, pack of markers, sketch note, I got him a little pencil box to put it all in and then like just all kinds of awesome supplies so it was like a great way to start the day. Um, but then before we got into the course content for introductions I told them that they were going to introduce the person next to them. So they got kind of paired up, and I gave them one minute for the first person to talk and the other person to listen. And I told them it was okay to make some notes, and I encouraged them to practice their listening if they were the person listening. And then I gave them a minute, let them switch roles, had the other person 
um, introduce themselves. So right away, they're, you know, the room is, is kind of full of energy because they're all talking to each other. Um, so they introduce themselves to each other for one minute, and then I told them for the introductions as we go around the room, when they introduce their buddy, I want them to just tell us one interesting thing. And so they did that. They went all around the room, they introduced each other, and I captured it all. I'm not sure how much of this is coming through, but I captured it all on a big sheet of paper with first name and one word. So I listened to their one interesting thing, and I captured just one word from that, um, which would kind of jog my memory. Um, went all the way around the room, and that worked um, really good, but what it created afterwards, I told them that that was an intentional exercise because they had to listen to one minute worth of content you know, one, one minute worth of introduction from the other person, and then filter through that and think about what's the one most interesting thing that they want to share. So intentional listening and filtering, which is really a key uh, skill set for graphic recording and sketch noting and recording ideas that you're hearing in a visual way. So that was intentional. But here's the other thing that, that really turned out awesome with that. That person became their doodle buddy for the day. And so after we would do an exercise, I would say, all right, now share it with your doodle buddy and give him a compliment. And so all throughout the morning, they were really kind of had a personal buddy all the way through that encouraged them and complimented. And they would kind of point out what they liked best on each other's um, doodles and, and try and mimic that or copy that on their own. So that worked out really well, um, kind of way better than I expected it to. So... That's the first thing I wanted to share. Um, introduce your neighbor who becomes your doodle buddy for the day. So I will keep that next time. And then, of course, I let them know by me writing down one word, I also filtered what I heard from their one most interesting thing and filtered that all the way down to one word. So kind of modeling that process. So that worked out real well. Um, the second thing that worked out well is, you know, I always run out of time to do evaluations. A lot of classes and workshops you go to, they give you an evaluation, and they want you to fill it out at the end. And I either run out of time or I forget to do it. It never works out, right? I almost never get feedback from my classes and workshops because I'm not doing it right, or I just don't get to it. And at the end of the class, people just want to go. So I came up with a new idea. I came up with something that I called the live feedback wall. And so what I did, I put a sheet of paper on the wall and I split it into four quadrants. I split it into four quadrants. The first one I called loved it. So if there was something through the day that they really liked, I wanted them to write it down on a sticky note and add it here to the loved it quadrant. The next quadrant here was called more please. So if they want more training at another time on another topic or want more information about a certain piece or they want me to come and work with their organization maybe, um, they want more. So if that was the case, put it on a sticky and add it down here. This one up here was called hmm and that was for kind of considerations, recommendations, suggestions for how we improve it. Things that didn't quite hit the mark. This would be the tweak it. Uh, I'll get some, some good feedback for the tweak it. And then I had one more square to deal with. So I called that one dance party. And I just let it be random. So whatever. <laughs> some hashtags, just a chance to be uh, weird and fun. Fun. That's what I mean. Chance to be fun. So... That was the second thing I wanted to share with you that worked really well, which was the live feedback wall. So the end of the class was we, we watched a three-minute TED Talk, and they sketch noted it the first time using sticky notes, kind of one idea per sticky note, 
so then they could practice kind of moving those sticky notes around to figure out how they wanted to structure it. And of course, the first time you try and listen and capture in real time, it's like totally overwhelming because you're trying to get everything and you just can't get everything. So if you've tried this, you know. And if you haven't, you should try it. We watched Matt Cutts' um, three-minute TED Talk on a 30-day challenge. It's a great one to start with. So we did it twice, and I told them we were going to do it twice, so the, and that we weren't going for perfect. That was a big message throughout the day. So they tried it on uh, sticky notes, felt a little overwhelmed, got some feedback and encouragement from their doodle buddy, got some ideas from others in the room, and then made a little game plan for themselves going back into it the second time. Um, and then we went through and watched it again, and... By the end of it, they had a 8.5 by 11 sketch note of a TED Talk. And it might have been what they heard, it might have been the messages or the challenge, it might have been what it meant to them. I encouraged them to kind of personalize it, and it was really neat to see how that worked. But the thing I want to tell you is that after the workshop, there was a visioning lunch, a visioning what's the next 20 years of Neurally going to look like. And so um, uh, Mary Lou Adore, who is totally awesome, and she's the director of uh, Neurally, she put folks in small groups, and after lunch, she gave them each a flip chart, and she told them to sketch the future, right? To try some of these new skills that they learned in the morning and sketch the future. And, and I was packing up while all this was happen happening, but... I was there when they reported out, and I have to tell you, it was so neat to see the, each of the groups create these flip chart sketch notes of their future vision uh, for the Natural Resources Leadership Institute. There must have been eight or ten different groups, and to see that wall get covered with these really visual, really engaging sketches... Uh, really just warmed my heart. And so that what a great way to kind of, uh, that's when I had to leave, so that was when I, I ended it. Um, but I, you know, I told them, this is awesome. Some of you were asking me how to, how to do, how to use this, right? They couldn't imagine how they're going to use doodling in their professional life, or they were struggling with that, working through that. And so this was a classic case in point where I showed them that they are, they're already using it. They came in thinking they couldn't draw. They left with proof that they can draw. They weren't exactly sure how they were going to use it. Within the first 45 minutes to an hour after the class, they were using it in a real life setting in a meaningful way that's going to impact the future of the Natural Resources Leadership Institute. So. That was my proud muddy moment. That was really awesome to see. And the number one thing I wanted to leave them with was permission to doodle. So that's all I have for you now. Great day. Now it's time to pack up, clean up, get this house in order. My girls are coming home tomorrow. Talk to you later.